Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study or midweek Bible study, I should say. Sometimes due to technical difficulties, um, I'll just say technical difficulties sometimes hamper uh, my, my efforts to get uh, these recordings to Angela and so forth. So uh, again, but I just want to welcome you to our, again, I'll just call it midweek services and uh, Bible study time. Um, I just want to share uh, a few things with you uh, going forward. Um, we had a great time on Sunday, just being able to be together, having Brother Tim with us. Uh, it's almost, for me, it was really like... Um, a time of confirmation, um, a time of healing, a time of rejoicing, and um, I was I was moved, and you know that's <clears throat> pretty much what you see and what you see out of me is that uh, because of the personal aspect of how God has dealt with me. It's really personal for me and sometimes emotional with with me as I as I speak. It's because God has shown me his mercy and his grace and his provision. And it's very real, very real to me at times. And and so, you know, I, I, I just again, I just I'm thankful that we can come together and be back together once again to enjoy our company, <clears throat> our fellowship, and uh, all things related. We kind of catch up on some things, and it's good to see some new folks Sunday. And um, we want to continue in that in that process of praying, uh, inviting, <clears throat> and so again, look forward to again being with the with you on Sunday. Uh, Sunday, where we'll cover the uh, there's there's a different a lot of different things concerning the sheep, uh, but I covered two uh, Sunday. One is that in order for sheep to rest, they have to be free from hunger and free from fear. And I'm going to do two more uh, this coming Sunday, and you'll want to hopefully you can be there or tune in to watch. And it gives us a great uh, great promises <clears throat> for us to know that God is just willing and able to to lead us and guide us and provide the needs just like we read in the, the 23rd Psalm. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. And if we'll just but embrace that truth of Scripture, we can we can see that in all things, God is in control. God is focused on your life. And so, uh, but I just want to just thank you for your, your, your attentiveness and, and um, got a lot of positive feedback about that particular sermon Sunday. And again, this coming Sunday, we'll talk about, uh, about the, the freedom from uh, disease. And it's going to be, um, for some, it may be a little difficult to hear, but we talk. Well, we may talk a little bit about what we do in, in relation to self harm. I'm not going to go into a full disclosure about self harm or the behavioral, the behavioral health side of it, but just what happens when we get into that situation when we have those particular fears. Um, again, my cat's getting kind of loud, but. Hopefully, you'll bear with me as we go through this particular study. But as we do, let's pray, and uh, we'll get on our way and, and uh, start our Bible study for, for now. Lord, thank you for the day you give us. We thank you for your love, and we pray your guidance on us. And Lord, we just ask you to just continue to make your word just applicable, easy to understand, and Father, that you would just mold us into your servants that you want us to become. Thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I want to look in the book of Philippians uh, this evening, and uh, Philippians chapter 4, really from verses 1 to 7. I won't hit all of them, but just to highlight some. And I know with, with a lot of what we are experiencing these days, it's easy to become afraid. It's easy to become worried. Um, and sometimes those things can translate into sometimes poor health, um, worry, anxiety. Uh, can have an effect on your life. It can have an effect on the way you think. It can have an it can have an effect on the way you go about your daily life, and it can interrupt those things. But as we look in Scripture, we see again in light of all that's going on, there are answers. There are things that you can do, and I want to share a few of those uh, this 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 evening. And uh, as I as I record, I've I've been watching the news and watch the president and and uh, you know you're, everybody's concerned about the war and its effect on you know, the Ukrainian people, but in also other things in other ways it it has an effect on us. You know, just since that uh, television broadcast or the the breaking news where. Uh, we were going to stop importing their oil. Um, the gas prices here in Okima shot up 20 cents just within a few minutes of his speech. And I know sometimes for some that that puts a pinch on a lot of people where they travel. But uh, you know, there are, again, there are some practical things that you can do and that, uh, you know, that will help you financially. I'll share a little bit about those, but let me get to the passage real quick. In Philippians chapter 4, and this is, I'm reading King James. I like the way the other versions read, uh, read it well, especially the Amplified. But it says, Therefore, my, br my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. And there's an interesting passage right here, an interesting phrase. He said, So stand fast in the Lord my dearly beloved. So stand fast in the Lord. In other words, a lot of different versions have that particular, that one phrase as meaning, stay faithful. That which you know to do, stay faithful. Keep doing it. Serve the Lord. I truly believe that as we serve him, God provides the means. Um, sometimes, you know, let, let's just take the fuel, for example. <clears throat> I know a lot of people have concerns about gas prices. You know, it takes it takes gas money to, to get to church. Let's just, let's use that in this example. It takes fuel to get around to work. But again, I truly believe that as we serve God, we're faithful to him in all aspects of our life, whether it's serving, giving, uh, ministering. I believe God truly takes care of his people. You may say, well, it doesn't show it in my pocketbook. Trust him. Be faithful. Well, I can't make it to church today. I don't have no gas money. God will provide. Be faithful. And he says, stand fast in the Lord. You know, just keep at it. Stick with it. You know, um, my daughter and one of her best friends, they, they play softball. And they, they get together sometimes and they practice together. And I encourage them, keep working at it. You know, you may throw a ball all the time and you might not even think twice about it but continue to work on your throwing, your target, catching the ball, 
a lot of the, just the basic things. Keep at it. Keep strong at it. Get better. Hitting the same way. Become your best hitter that you can be. Practice. 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 In light of what we do, <clears throat> keep serving. You might think, well, I, I do that all the time. Keep at it. God wants you to be faithful to him. And that's why I think that verse is saying, stand fast in the Lord. Become unmovable. I mean, there may be things that may kind of shake you. You know, the strong winds of oppression may come against you and shake you, but you're not going to be moved because of what you're planted in. Your roots are deep. You know, outside our house out here, we have a large oak tree. And it's very strong. I've seen it grow. It's, you know, we've been here 20 years and I've seen it grow quite a bit. And it's thick and it's just very healthy. But it sits right next to a water source, a pond. And the soil here is very good. And so that makes the roots spread out. It makes that tree solid. I've seen many storms come through here with a lot of high winds and that tree is unmoved. Others out there have fallen. But because where its roots are, 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 are gathered into it, the soil, it keeps it strong, healthy. Stand fast. Now I'm gonna go on down to verse three because he talks about helping women and it says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellows. <clears throat> in other words, those in the same call, those of the same group, the church. He says, true yoke fellow, you're with me in this. We're together. We're a team. We're a family. He says, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, my fellow, with other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. In other words, some have gone on to be with the Lord that he's speaking of. But Paul says these things in verse 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Sometimes people say, oh, you can't rejoice in the Lord all the time. That's what the Bible says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yes, it's very difficult when someone that we know and love passes away. But we can rejoice. Rejoice. Not that they're gone, not that we're making light of their passing, but we can rejoice that we'll see them again. Just as we see each other face to face, you'll see them in heaven once again. Death, death, is, death is not a closed door. It's an opportunity to know eternity. It's an opportunity to know the Lord face to face and to see him face to face. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. That's just a simple, easily understood imperative. Rejoice. That we can find rejoicing. We don't see it much on the news. We don't see it much on, in, in any kind of media. But we can rejoice in the Lord. He is he's simply worthy to be rejoicing in at any time. And then it says, let your moderation be known unto all men. That word moderation kind of tell it, it's 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 a word. Again, again, it's an old word, almost archaic, but it talks about your gentle spirit. Let your moderation, the way people see you. And they should see you as a gentle spirit. It says, let it be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. In other words, live your life, conduct yourself in a manner, in a manner that says, I'm living this way because I know Jesus can return at any moment. Be ready. Be ready to go and live life that way. And then six, with all, again, with all the things that are going on today in our world, Gas prices, everything, food prices going up. 
It says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. In other words, don't let things in the world corner you into a place where you become anxious or overwhelmed. He says, be careful for nothing. In other words, always be ready, have a plan. And in that plan, you know, I was talking about that earlier. I mean, what, what can you do? You know, the Bible speaks of different in different areas within the Bible. It talks about stewardship. Stewardship is simply taking care of what God has blessed you with, what he's put into your hands. One thing that a lot of when people speak of their finances and personal finance people, they tell you, live within your means. You know, whatever you bring in, live within that. You know, it it would be easy for me. You know, we don't have a lot of offerings in Okima as far as places to eat. You know, we've got Mexican, we've got two Mexican places, a Chinese place, um, pizza, McDonald's, another little fast food Mexican place, and Subway. Basically, that's it. But every time I would go somewhere for lunch, it cost anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars just for lunch because the prices have gone up. So I made a conscious decision to just make sure that I come home and that's where I'm at. I came home, I got something out of the fridge that we bought for lunch, uh, have a few of my barbecue chips on the side and that's my lunch. And I figured, you know, it cost me a little bit to get those things, but overall, I probably saved at least $10 during my lunchtime. You can do those little things like that. Live within your means. Plan for things like this. That means going out and getting something to eat. <clears throat> you know, eat cheap. Because I know some places are very expensive. Um, I remember when fast food restaurants or buffet type restaurants were like $8 all you can eat. Now it's very expensive. You know, $16, $17 for all you can eat. Golden Corral, Ryan's, those places like that. But live within your means. Another thing you can do is save. Save money. Put aside a certain amount of what you get paid, whatever comes into your hand. Uh, you know, we make, as a family, we make a conscious effort to save money every two weeks. We put something into the savings account. Might not, not be a whole lot, but we put it in there. Um, we want to save for, again, not so much a rainy day, but just because of there, there come times when you need a savings account. So we save. Um, other things you can do is, like, like, like I do, you know, I've shared this many times, I love Dillard's clothing. Uh, I, I just love their clothes. I, I, I used to like JCPenney, but they kind of switched brands on me. And so um, I like Dillard's clothing. And sometimes Dillard's clothing, the kind I like to wear, is expensive. But I look for those sales. I look for that cheap underwear like I've talked about before. Uh, shirts that go on and they're like 80% off. Um, you know, just the other day, I bought me a pair of Levi jeans, jeans for like 18 bucks. But you can look for things like that. Um, and I also, I, I even pray about things like that, finding those things that, you know, that I need that, uh, that hopefully I can find. And so, again, those may be some comical things, but they work. They're, 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 they, they take what we are trying to do as far as stewardship and make it a personal thing for us to, to engage in. So, you know, stay within your means, live within your means. Uh, if you don't need to take a trip, you know, don't go. Um, save that money. Um, set aside money for savings. And then, you know, look for those, pray about those things that you need, even groceries, you know, pray, pray about your groceries. Um, but these are, again, these are some basic things that you can do. Uh, and then the last thing, of course, you know, give, you know, you know don't, don't sacrifice what you give to the Lord to cover other things. Trust him. Trust him in your giving. 
uh, don't let that become, well, you know, I can do without that. I can, I, I don't need to give to my church. I, I'll take care of this. No, keep on giving as you ought to. And so uh, doing those things goes a long way. But here he says, be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. That word request is kind of what I wanted to focus on and close with. Requests are plentiful out there. I mean, everything or about every day we go through, there's a request for something. Whether it be something that's affordable, uh, you may need a new vehicle. Do you pray about it? Think about that. Pray about your next vehicle purchase. Um, pray about certain things in your life, whether it's fuel, whether it's a job. Pray about those things because they affect you. That is your life. That's your livelihood. And you ought to pray about it. It says in everything, in all matters of your life, pray. Pray and make thanksgiving. Even if you don't have it yet, pray and thank God for bringing it your way. Trust him with it. Again, we live in very uncertain times. Uh, I, I, look at his, I look at things in life and I see a lot of exciting times because the church can flourish. The church will flourish. People will come to know the Lord because of things going on like this in today's world. But we have to be mindful that we need to trust God. Keep trusting him. Be faithful. Remember what it said? Those who stand for the Lord, be unmovable. Even as, 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 as a shaking is going on in this world today, be mindful of God's faithfulness. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. And again, it shows. You'll see it on your face. You'll see it in your livelihood. You'll be able to sleep at night because I know there have been times in my life that I'd be, I was so overwhelmed with worry that I couldn't sleep. I was so afraid at times of certain things I couldn't sleep. But I rest in the peace of knowing that God is in control. God has a plan for me. God has a plan for you. Stay faithful in following that plan. I mean, it might not be like a, uh, you ever, if you ever go to Ikea store, <clears throat> you go to Ikea store and you buy something. You buy, let's just say, um, some type of furniture. They, they sell all kinds of things. But you, like, like for example, for Miranda, we bought her, we bought her a bed, king size bed, I believe, or queen size. But we also brought bought her a, like a chest, a drawer, drawers, you know, for her clothing. But it comes in a box, you know, so big it doesn't come pre-assembled. And what you have to do is take all those pieces out and put them together. I have to put it together. But it comes with directions. But the the funny thing is that the directions have no words; they just have pictures. Do this part, connect this part, screw this one together, connect it to this board, put this board on next, put the back end on it, and so forth. <clears throat> no words, just pictures, but it has directions. <clears throat> Very helpful. But sometimes as we live our life, we want that type of direction for us. Sometimes if I think if God showed us what was truly ahead, we wouldn't want to do it. <clears throat> We would object. God, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to. I don't want to serve that in that manner. We would have objections to it. But be faithful in what God has shown you already. He's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to me to this point so far, and I know in the future He will not fail. Trust in that. Trust in that. Stand in the Lord. Be faithful. Again, difficult days ahead. Uh, many have gone through difficult times already. But our prayers are for each other. We can grasp each other and pray. 
uh, we can grasp each other and just fellowship. And uh, again, I appreciate those who have been coming or that have been that have returned. And uh, if you have any needs, if you have any, if you have any requests, if people you know that aren't saved, text me their name, text me who they are, and I'll begin to pray with them with you. That we'll pray that God would save them and turn them to Him. And uh, I, I believe as we as we share things like that, God begins to move faithfully. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and your the time that we spent in prayer at the beginning. Um, continue to pray for each other. And it, it was so fun. I, I just had a good time Sunday just being with everybody and uh, looking forward to some good times. And so but once we get into more <clears throat> a more general routine, being face to face, I'm going to do some things that I talked with Jennifer about. And that's talking about. Uh, going into a subject matter about what, what we call apologetics. And so I, I, I've got a lot of things prepared, ready to show you, but I'd like to do it in person. It's a, it's a better class to do in person. So we'll, we'll settle that time and get that thing, get that, get that project ready and going. So be praying about some good things and we continue to pray for all of those that come up on our group me chat, uh, pray for one another. We, we still need. We still have people that need continued healing, completed healing, in the process of that, and others who are facing financial difficulties, even uh, maybe sometimes relational issues. So let's continue to pray for each other. So let's bow and let's pray. We'll be dismissed. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for the day that you give us. We thank you for your love for us, and Lord, as we look into your word, the word told us, Lord, that we need to stand fast. Stand faithful. Even in all the things that we see going on around us, it can cause fear. It can cause a lot of anxiety. But Father, we pray that as we trust you, we walk in your ways, you show us favor. You take care of our needs. Lord, even when we feel like there's nothing in the pocketbook, nothing in the wallet, you can provide. Lord, we've seen this, and I've experienced time and time again where you take care of us. Thank you for your love for us, and we will continue our services on Sunday. Looking forward to that and a great day. Thank you again for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday.